Last time we put the roof together. Now we need to secure the perimeter and add doors and a window. I had this garage door delivered when I had everything else delivered, and it's just been sitting in the garage since then. And since the car was sleeping outside, junk started to collect in here, mostly construction junk. Time to move it to its permanent home. Back and forth, back and forth. There goes my awesome daughter. I've never put one of these together, so the instructions will be helpful, I hope. Well, they're kind of complicated, and the pictures are kind of small and not very helpful. But without them, it'd be harder, so I'm using them. Yeah, the instructions aren't very clear. One good thing that's actually not a good thing is that there are tons of extra bits of hardware. So it's hard to see which screw is which or which bracket is supposed to go on first or whatever. All right, enough of the instructions, let's do this. The first panel goes in and is nailed to the studs to hold it for the next step, the tracks. Some of the writing on the instructions is really tiny, so I took pictures of them and zoomed in on them. The tracks screw in directly to the studs with lag bolts that have a red cap on them. It's critical to get these tracks level and plumb. Yeah, I can't see anything. Let me reposition the camera. Where's my framing?
The next panel slides into the rails. And the next one. This is going pretty fast now. Here I installed the door lock, so I had to take it apart to be able to knock those little bits out. The last panel goes up and is nailed into the header to hold it until the rest of the track is put up. The corner tracks get bolted into a 2x4 that I installed on one of the trusses. These only take weight pulling down on them, not tension from the springs, so it doesn't need to be braced laterally. Now the springs go on. 
The springs take a lot of weight off the door, so you can easily open and close it. It's kind of tricky to get these to work right. There's tension and anchoring going on here that needs to be just right. I ended up changing the mounting point for the springs back a little bit. It works! It works! Now I'm putting on hurricane ties to the roof. These are metal brackets that tie the trusses or rafters to the top plates and the walls so that the roof doesn't fly off in a hurricane. You need to pound in 10 number 10 galvanized nails in each tie. You only need one tie on each truss. Usually they're staggered from one side to the other, but I put them on all the trusses on both sides. They're only 50 cents each, so why not? We don't get many hurricanes in Utah, but we did just have a major wind event with category three hurricane sustained winds a few weeks ago, and the roof is still on, so they must work. Hammering above your head is very tiring. All right, now the window. This window is really the impetus to this project. I found it on clearance at the local big box store for super cheap. So I bought it and it sat for a couple years in a corner. Cocking goes liberally all around the frame. Then it goes into hole. It's into hole. Then it gets nailed all around the perimeter of it. Cleaning out the garage to bring in the mill made me look at the window again and start the plans for the shed. More caulking on the inside, then some Tyvek tape to waterproof it even more on the outside. Now to the entrance door. This is a steel insulated pre-hung door. I changed the original door I ordered out for a different, stronger model. 
so the opening's a little bit too small for the new door. Time to break out the circular saw and fix that. Looks good now. Caulking going on in abundance. Once the door's in, you need to shim the sides to make it nice and snug. Shims are just thin pine pieces cut with an incline to snug up as you pound them into the jam. This is where you kind of tweak the fitting so that the clearance is the same all around the door. Once it's good, you drive long screws all the way into the studs to secure it through the hinges. Now I install the hardware, the doorknob and the deadbolt. I actually ended up changing the deadbolt out for a keypad deadbolt. It's much easier to remember a code than to bring a key out every time with you and then try and find that key. Ugh. More cock. Yay, we have a fully enclosed shop shed. Now we can do electricity, insulation, and drywall inside, and siding and paint on the outside. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the shop shed.